what is decentralization? Uh, when you use technology, you normally would expect it to be centralized. If you use Facebook, if you use Google, even if you use software from a software developer like Microsoft, uh, you would actually expect it to be centralized. You would expect there's, that there's an entity out there which would take responsibility for the software and which further develops your software and which uh, makes the rules inside the software. But of course, in this case, you are somehow a little bit dependent on this manufacturer. And um, so there's some cases out there where you actually don't want this manufacturer, where you actually want the freedom that the users control the system and how it develops and how it develops further and how the rules are being made. And this is where you strive for being decentralized in your software. That means you take out the central entity, you take out the responsibility by one person or by one company and you replace it with the responsibility of the users. This is what we're trying to achieve in decentralization. Okay, now why does decentralization actually matter? It matters because of a fundamental difference between truth and trust. In traditional systems, you normally have to trust somebody. You have to trust the entity which is controlling the system and, and which you can maybe also hold responsible for running the system. A bank would be a nice example for that. For example, if you give the bank your money and then they give you a slip of paper stating you own 100 euros, you have to trust them that they give it back to you. If you look at technology, you have to trust a company that they actually do updates and that they care for the system and that you can reach them. So this is trust, right? And if you want to get away from this trust and exchange it with the mathematical truth, then you want decentralization. And this is why decentralization actually matters. It gives the power back to the people who actually work with the system and not those who develop the system. So how do you actually decentralize a system? Well, first of all, it's quite a nice idea to use DLT technology for that. So use some kind of a blockchain. And I think it's even better if you don't just use somebody's blockchain, but you build your own blockchain, because then you can control that you give up the control of it, right? So um, how do you build your own blockchain? First of all, you should decide for a framework uh, which helps you building blockchains. Uh, we at Kilt decided for Parity Substrate, uh, which is quite a powerful uh, framework and uh, a lot of blockchains have been built in the last years on that. So that might have been a quite good idea. Uh, this gives you the basis basically for be really becoming decentralized. If you build it on a database which is meant for be being centralized from the beginning, then you probably will end up centralized. So uh, using a blockchain is not the worst possible idea. Um, but a blockchain is not decentralized because it is a blockchain. There's many blockchains which are run in private mode, there are many blockchains which are run in permissioned mode, for example, and those don't produce decentralized systems. Uh, it's only um, decentralized when you really uh, give out the possibility to everyone to take every role in the system, right? And this is what you normally don't have in the permissioned world. So now if you have this um, blockchain which has the possibility to become or the ability uh, to become decentralized, what you do next, uh, you have to care about the security. The security is put into blockchain systems by a variety of people who run the system, right? You don't have one uh, bookkeeper, you have many, many bookkeepers out there and they have to somehow find a consensus on what is written on the blockchain. This gives the decentralization and gi this gives a huge amount of uh, security. Um, you, can, you have many ways to do that. The way we chose um, is that we became a parachain to the Kusama network. What does that mean? Um, that means that we produce blocks and we send every single block to the Kusama blockchain, which is a decentralized system by itself, and there are validators who actually audit every single block 
and make sure that it fits to the block before and there's no one um, uh, playing around with the data. So this audit system gives us the security. There's many other ways to do that, but this is the way we chose to go. So this is decentralized security by having shared security on the Kusama network. So that, that's the first step. And the second step um, would actually be uh, that you run your blockchain in a decentralized way. Because the auditors on the Kusama blockchain, they just check if your blocks are okay. They don't store your blocks and they don't produce your blocks and they don't collect the transactions and make the blocks out of them. So you need people who do that. And if you do this as a single company, you are somehow moving again in the direction of centralization because you could actually say, if I'm the only one who collects the blocks, then I could stop collecting the blocks and then the whole system will stall, which is not really decentralized. So uh, what we decided is to uh, build a framework of uh, 75 collators over the next couple of months, uh, which are actually doing the job of collecting the blocks and storing the blocks and maintaining basically the blockchain and then sending every single block for audit to the Kusama blockchain. So we have two layers here and both are decentralized. And the third step that you would want to take is probably that you really give up control over the system. When you do a substrate-based blockchain, you have enormous abilities uh, to upgrade your system, to change parameters uh, in the system, uh, which is often not the case in older blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin. You might have heard of things like forks. Um, all those things are not necessary anymore in substrate-based based blockchains like Polkadot and Kusama uh, and also Kilt, because you can have democracy votes on changing things on the blockchain, which is extremely powerful. Um, but of course, this comes with some responsibility. Somebody has to propose those changes and somebody has to say, yeah, we're going to change it or we're not going to change it. And this is what we do with the democracy module uh, of the substrate uh, blockchain. That means that every single participant in the kill blockchain can actually set up a proposal and say, hey, I want this to change. I don't want 75 collators, I want 76 collators. That would be a better idea. And then the whole community of the, um, of the users of the kill blockchain would actually be there to vote on if they find this a good idea or not. And if they find it a good idea, the blockchains are going to automatically change it to 76. This is decentralized democracy. And there's no single entity now anymore who either controls the truth, which is the security part, or controls the production of the blocks, which is in our case the collators, and or controls the fate of the system. So how is it going to change in the future? Because this is the democracy. And this is how you actually totally decentralize a system.